So again, we are in a very special place. And it's only us that is here. We can't even hear any outside noise. There is no outside noise. So we know that our ancestors walked here. We have evidence of that behind me. What does that mean to you sitting here? I think our ancestors have got a lot of information for us. And we only have to listen. And the way we listen is to be in the stillness. Because we listen and we hear, it comes to us in whispers. It never yells to us. It never shouts to us. It's only ever a slight whisper and a feeling and sense. So I think I'd like to just take a moment for us to have complete silence so that we can absorb and hear the whispers that Gaia and the ancestors have for us in this moment. Long before we got here on the earth, Gaia was here waiting for us. Gaia knows you. She knows the moment you came onto the planet. She knows the moment you took your first breath. She knows your name. She knows that you are here now with her. She has seen you through the ages, lifetime after lifetime. She knows exactly where you have walked, where you have been, and what you have done. She has been your partner in all of it. In some of our lifetimes, we remembered our partner. And in some of those lifetimes, we didn't. And now the invitation is to rekindle that partnership, to carry you forward in your lifetimes to come. Be still and listen and feel the love of Gaia. Feel the love of the ancestors. Feel the ancient ones. And feel the benevolence of spirit, the creator, God of all things celebrating what you have accomplished today. Greeting, dear ones, I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. We sit in the stillness of the sun, still in that which you call Monument Valley in perhaps a mysterious place. Behind me and around me are rock formations, an alcove really, formerly occupied by the ancients, the ancient ones, the Anasazi. I want to talk about energy. And in that I must review. For the whole pinnacle of the message is what the ancients said and gave to you long before the Western predictions happened. If you want to look at the precession of the equinoxes, the 2012 experience, the wobble of the planet, all of this was seen and predicted by the ancients. This was from the stars. A prediction that didn't really surface to the Western world until recently. And the prophecy was that if you pass 2012, many things would change. 
the ancients knew the planet. They knew the consciousness of the partnership. And all over the globe, the message was the same. That if you would pass that procession of the equinoxes, that time, the stripe in the sky, which is the Milky Way, you'd have 18 years into it and 18 years out of it. And in that time frame, much would shift. So the prophecy actually comes from the ancient ones from the stars and you sit today in the modern world within the prophecy the teachings of Cryon are to then bring you up to date and up to speed not only with the prophecies but what's next what does it look like a change of energy what does it look like a, a change of consciousness now we have taught for a very long time that human consciousness is allied to nature. We brought you science long ago. 28 years ago we told you about the magnetic grid. Part of the earth's science today, but the partnership for the ancient ones. Did you know there were hunting grids? Did you know there were places that the animals would go intuitively on grid lines that were known by the ancients that helped them to hunt? This is the partnership we speak of. And it continues today. In a modern way, we will say that you are allied with the magnetic grid, with the crystalline grid, with the hunting grid, with all of those grids that the ancients knew of. You still are. And so what I'm about to tell you is the ancient prophecy said that the energies of these would shift and change. In the channels that we have given, we have told you about the proof of the alliance of the measurements of the magnetic grid and of consciousness. We've given you information that things are going to shift in ways you don't expect. So I'm going to tell you one. And it refers to the first channel we gave you. This won't take long. But there is just a little science. I want to talk about polarity. And how polarity is beginning to shift even beyond what you thought it could. Some of it is chemistry, some of it is physics. I would like to define just for now as an example what you have called osmosis. The technical definition may be this one. Molecules of a solvent passing through a semi-permeable membrane from a more concentrated area to a less concentrated area. In plain English where there's something more, it flows into something less because nature doesn't like the vacuum. That's osmosis. It has been also defined generally as when something that was a great amount would pour into something that was a less amount. People have said even that they can't understand a book, they'll put it under their pillow and get it over the night through osmosis. <laughs> so it has many meanings. But that is a polarity, isn't it? It's one that balances. It's one that balances in nature, in chemistry, in physics. The most profound one as the magnetic master is what happens with electrons and atoms where they try their best to form that which is harmony and balance when you see something magnetic it may have too many or too few electrons in the atoms that make up the solid and the polarity then is either repelled or drawn to it 
It's a form, really, of osmosis, but it's static and remains. And that has to do with too many and too few electrons. That's polarity. That's nature that wants to balance. And yet there are things that don't apply, that never have. You might find it interesting. One of the things that never followed those rules, really, was light. Now, darkness is often defined by me as the absence of light. You would think if you have something dark and light, whether it's metaphoric or actual, that light would want to flow, therefore, into a dark place, and yet it doesn't. And therefore, a dark and light ratio on the planet would remain the same. Because there's nothing to harmonize it. There's nothing to make it flow one way or the other. Consciousness is the same. I've told you, dear ones, a scenario of past lives that you would have, that you have gone through them, even with a high consciousness, it didn't take over from a low one. There was no real polarity. If there had been, this land would never have fallen to the invaders. For the ancients had a very high consciousness. They were allied with the planet. The invaders were not. So you might say that darkness invaded this place. And when I started the channels, I said, and due to that, the crystalline remembering grid right here was sad. That there was sadness in the valley. And that the ancients who still remain and their spirits still remain, cry the tears of the rain for the sadness that is still here. And now I want to give you the good news. If I can do this in a non-scientific way, in a way that all of you can understand, I ask you to celebrate the land, to rewrite the sadness. And you agreed. How can fewer than 50 people make that kind of an impact that has been here for hundreds of years? It is in the rocks and in the soil and in the trees and in the spirits. Well, the good news is this, and the ancients knew it, that if you pass the marker of 2012, it's in the stars. If you pass the marker, you'd still be human, but you'd start rewriting how the polarity of energy on the planet works. It would start to become more harmonious. And that light would suddenly start to be like osmosis. It indeed would try its best to flow into areas that were less light. A real change, not in physics, but in esoterics. Consciousness that was high would win out over consciousness that was low. We told you there would be a battle of light and dark on this planet, and you've already seen it. Light is winning. We told you that. And now the reason is because the very process of what flows to what is starting to change. The crystalline grid will take a little of what you give and because of this new phenomenon, we'll start to rewrite all that is here that is sad. When you leave this place, it stays with you. You will remember it, it will remember you, and even wherever you are on the planet in remembrance, it will, it will continue to rewrite itself. The impact that you have today is to plant the seeds of light here, of celebration here, of happiness here, 
of remembrance of good things here and that's going to spread and spread and spread like a seed that is planted of consciousness and light unlike before the shift this one is almost an infection of celebration those who live here are ready for it those who live here with all that has happened practice it and now you can too and that's the harmony those listening all over the planet if you could for a moment right now understand this process you'll know that as you think upon these things and celebrate the rocks and the dirt that are right here it's going to be catchy it's going to spread and the land which is your partner will see what you're trying to do enhance it understand it cooperate with it because light is winning the sadness eventually will be transmuted completely to harmony understanding things that you have asked for just a few people here and there with the hearts the knowledge the enlightenment and the understanding and respect of the partnership can change it the ancients knew something that when the shift happened they would start to share their secrets because it would be safe and they are whereas the rules and the traditions said keep it to yourself keep it within the tribe today they are sharing they're sharing because they see you are respecting the land understanding the land and are ready to receive and so the question has never been who's teaching who dear ones again right now these rocks are talking to you through the silence it is so powerful you can hear it all and they're saying thank you for what you're doing and they're also saying there's more that you're going to take home than you expected again in the right place at the right time pretending to be tourists <laughs> hardly and so it is. Okay, here goes. Shiv Nasha, Ahala Ahala Go Nasha, Ahala Ahala Go Nasha, Shiv Nasha Bege Hojola Ea Hainaya, Ahala Ahala Go Nasha, Ahala Ahala Go Nasha, Shadachi <laughs> She na sha be ge hwa jo la e ya he ne ya She ka jing hwa jo na sha She ka jing hwa jo na sha She na sha be ge hwa jo la e ya he ne ya A thwa jing hwa jo na sha A thwa jing hwa jo na sha She na sha be ge hwa jo la e ya he ne ya Okay, now to translate the song, it goes, there's beauty before me, there's beauty behind me, there's beauty below me, beauty above me, all around me is beauty. What more appropriate for the place, right? Okay, so walk in beauty song. Greetings, dear ones, I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. For those listening, we are again in the former homes of the ancients, the ancient ones, the Anasazi. You may hear the echoing of the cave before us. 
as those in attendance sit upon the rock. It's ancient here and it's sacred. It's sacred because you want it to be. It is a remembrance and a respect of those who were here before you. I want to continue a little bit about energy. I want you to remember what I told you before. that The various monoliths in what you call Monument Valley didn't have names as much as they had energies. Those energies will change. And those who live here will feel them change. Much as we told you that the vortices and the vortex would change in a place not too far from here called Sedona. But what I want to speak of is you personally. What better place for you to receive a healing? And the healing today would be that which is inappropriate thought for you. That which is doubting for you or unbelief for you. Wouldn't it be good if you could then somehow wipe away all the doubts? If you could transmute yourself back just for a moment to a people who understood the planet so much that they wanted for nothing except rain. <laughs> so dear ones, this is the place for this right now. The energies we spoke of a few moments ago that are starting to shift are just ripe with change for you. We've told you that light is winning. We've told you that there are now processes which are new. Or they're not new, but they are now enhanced past what they ever were before. And it can go in several directions depending upon the free will and free choice of the human being. But I want to talk to you right now, those listening and the ones in this alcove. What you say is what is heard by your body by the earth around you literally by the ethers in the oxygen there's never been a time where what you then say out loud and what you act out there's never been a time where that was more profound and you've heard me talk about this before but it follows on with the last channel because personally you can create for yourself a winning scenario of healing. What do you speak out loud? This is a new era. It's a new time. And yet it's a time where the ancient truths are starting to come alive more than ever before. What do you think about yourself? Not what you look like, not how old you are. Do you feel worthy to sit in this place where the ancients were? And if you don't, let's take a moment to review the magnificence that you are. You're alive and you were chosen to be part of this partnership with the planet, with God, which all there is. Life. You are not removed from the rest of everything as you were taught from birth. You've done nothing wrong. You arrive magnificent and you carry around with you, however, the feeling of questioning that. It's time right now. What better time than in this magic mystery place than to settle that debt that you owe yourself by forgiving yourself of whatever you think you've done or for the years that you've spent doubting yourself 
and to know that you're clear that you are a part of the partnership and that the planet knows you God knows you there are those who carry around doubt and fear about death itself and there is no sting in death there's a constant renewal how could you doubt that when you see in nature when you see Gaia renewal and renewal and renewal and renewal to think that you're apart from that doesn't make any kind of spiritual sense the renewal is guaranteed and the soul is yours forever some of you are afraid of perhaps the health of the things you carry or the sensitivities which might affect your health did you know that by speaking out loud that which you are your body will hear it and cooperate and if you speak out loud that you are afraid or in fear or you're not worthy your body and all that's around you will hear that and cooperate totally but if you say your magnificence if you will claim that which is yours including the health that you deserve you will be fascinated if not amazed at how quickly things start to heal let's let this be a healing ceremony what are your thoughts right now about who you are not about tomorrow not about what you're doing right now who are you and I'll tell you what spirit says you are you are a piece of the whole you deserve to be here you are known by the planet by spirit totally by name no accident the things that have happened to you no accident that you're here and so that means you can stand tall and know that all things are possible but more than ever in this new energy dear ones what you think is what you become never has there been a time where affirmations are stronger than now then pure intent and thought is stronger than now what habits do you carry around that your mothers and fathers who you love very much have given you because they were in an old energy where perhaps what they said and the traditions were appropriate for the time but now suddenly you are starting to change to fall in line with the beauty of a new planet traditions will be created in your generation and those to follow that are far different than the traditions of your elders and the traditions will be so grand and great they will shake hands with the ancients you'll have new ways of saying old things because the truth is always the truth In a day or so, you leave. How many of you are going to remember this moment as the voice echoes in the cavern where you have a chance right now to leave something here as you get up and leave this place? What if you leave illness here? What if you leave doubt and fear here? Some have come with issues that you've not spoken of to anybody. The rocks know what they are. I know what they are. Why don't you leave them here as well? Things are not always as they seem, dear ones. And right now, the way they are is ripe for healing, shift, change, and magnificence. That's who you are. What you do next, right now, with your intent 
is the key. There has never been a better time in your life that where you sit now in this sacred place, in this mystery valley, to dump all of the things that are inappropriate for you to think of or be. By yourself, in the stillness of now. Do you hear that? <laughs> the power of nothing is supreme. It is Gaia, the beauty of the silence that is here. And so it is. <laughs>